video, we're going to take a look at how to essentially uh, create 3D motion graphics using uh, displacements. And this effect is essentially an effector object, in this case it's the sphere, that is actually controlling um, the displacement of the ground here. So yeah, this is actually connected together and it's, uh, it's working flawlessly. So yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so let's get started by adding in a shape 3D. Let's just view that in the second viewer here. Change the size to 20. And then we can also increase the subdivisions to 40. So if you view this wireframe now, you can see... Oh, let's just single out the viewer as well. You can see we have a pretty dense plane here. Uh, and we will essentially be placing geometry on each of the intersecting lines in this plane. So, um, but uh, we'll do that in a little bit. Let's go ahead and add in a camera 3D. We can just pipe that into the shape 3D. Then we can add in a render 3D so we can see the output of the image that we're essentially creating. Split the viewer and then just drag the camera out a bit. View the render. We want this image to be square. So type in 1024 by 1024. That is essentially a standard 1K texture resolution. This is uh, plenty for, for this particular use case. Change the render type to hardware and uh, also disable the wireframe. Now what we need to do is we need to drag this out so that this square is essentially filling the entire frame. So we want to zoom in on the top right corner, click down on the drop down menu here and then just disable smooth resize. And you can see the pixels become very pixelated which is uh, really nice in this particular use case. So just keep adjusting the camera and you want the corners of the plane to essentially fill the image. So, And you might be wondering, why aren't we just using a hardware UV renderer? And the reason for that is that the locator 3D that we're actually putting down now needs a camera as a reference. And if it doesn't have a camera, it's not working correctly. So that's like why we're actually using a camera in this way. In the camera settings of the locator, uncheck use frame format and then change it to the same resolution as the render 3D we just created. So that would be 1024 by 1024. Very nice. Let's just click this button up here as well to just get a better shading of the models here. So the thing is we want to use this image as a displacement texture for this shape. So if we add in a displace 3D, pipe uh, these in like that, now you can see not much happened, but if we go to the renderer, add in an ellipse mask, you can see we have some displacement going on. However, it is not a complete effect yet. And what we want is we want to add in a second 3D object that is essentially controlling the movement of this displacement. I'm just gonna feather it a little bit. Um, so if we add in a merge 3D after the displace and we can add in another shape 3D, we can change that to be a sphere, pipe that in and then we view that. There you can see it. Let's just uh, move it out a little bit. And then you might be wondering, why is this vertical? It should be horizontal, right? Uh, and the reason for that is essentially that the locator 3D is essentially using the X and the Y axes to essentially determine the location of the uh, uh, 2D XY positions. In the 2D image you have the X and the Y and then in the 3D you have the X and the Y. So we need to do everything we need to do in this space and then we turn it around afterwards. Now let's connect all of this together. So in the ellipse node, in the center setting of the mask, right click and then connect to locator 3D and then position. So now if you choose the locator 3D and you move that around, you can see that you're moving the displacement. However, you might notice that the locator is right now touching the edge of the plane, but the center of the sphere is not. So it's kind of a mismatch here. And that is due to the resolution in the uh, locator. So in under camera settings here, uncheck use frame format settings and then just set the resolution to be the same as your uh, render 3D. So that would be 1024 by 1024. And you can now see that the locator 3D is essentially centered on the sphere and uh, you're essentially controlling the displacement with this 3D marker. So and this works for both ways. And uh, now in a perfect world we should be able to just right click here and then connect to the sphere 
and we can do that, but it's not going to work. But we can we can try it. So what I, what happens if, if you go into the locator and you right click on the x axis, you connect to well, there's nothing to connect to. So so first thing you need to go into the shape 3D. You need to right click on the x axis. You need to publish and you need to do the same for the y. And then if you go into the locator, you can now connect these up. So connect to shape 3D x offset and you can do it with the connect to y offset as well. So now if you move this sphere, you can see you're essentially controlling uh, all the other operations, which is nice. However, now there is a small issue. Now you can't actually add keyframe animations to the translation anymore. So if you go into the middle of the scene, middle frame of the sequence, and you like right click, add set key on translate group, like nothing happens. And it has to do with the, the publishing itself. Let's just remove publish and then remove publish on the y axis as well. So the solution I came up with is essentially to pin the shape 3D uh, transform tab, then click the locator 3D, just remove all from translate group, and then we can right click expression, then we drag the x from the locator onto the x of the shape 3D, and then we do the same for the y. So drag it over like that. Now, if we move this shape 3D, you can see that everything is following as it should be, which is nice. Okay, we don't want our image plane to look like this. So um, just move this over here. Uh, we can add in a replicate 3D node. And then let's also just create our instance uh, geometry. So uh, shift space, we can add a S rectangle. All of the nodes that begin with an S is essentially part of the vector shape uh, node category. So if you view that in the left viewer, you can see we have a pretty standard uh, square here. Add that to an extrude 3D, then view that in the uh, left viewer here. And we just pipe that extrude into the green input of the replicates, and we can pipe the displaced image plane here into the yellow input of the replicate 3D node. So now if you view that, you can see we have something going on here. Let's just pipe that into the Merge3D and just replace that connection. Now, if we just go into the Replicate, oh, and unpin the Shape 3D, lower the scale, yeah, something like 0 0.9, that's nice. And then in the Extrude 3D, we can increase the extrusion depth to 1. Just type in 1. Just click this to shade it better. We can uh, add some uh, tiny adjustments to the bevel depth and the same with the bevel width so that it looks a bit nicer in the final image. Add a transform after the latest merge and then you know put the X rotation to minus 90 degrees and then just press enter and you are oriented the right way. However you might be noticing that we are uh, hovering very high above the grid so I also like to just in the extrude here we can just rotate the extrude as well by 180 degrees like so and there you can see that the grid or the center of the scene is essentially at the top of these boxes. Let's make some adjustments to the ellipse node so we can increase the soft edge here quite a bit and then we can also just grab the mask here and just lower it to something really low like 0 0.2 if you want it to be smooth or if you want it to be harsh you can make those adjustments here. I want it to be like something in the middle. Now what we also can do, we can actually go into the rectangle and um, we can increase the corner radius a little bit to just round off the shapes to make them look a bit nicer. We can also take the sphere, we can lower the size of it quite a bit and um, we can lower the Z axis as well. So it's like hovering closer to the, to the surface essentially. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and add a quick animation. So on the first frame of the animation, just right click here, animate transit group, move the uh, sphere all the way to the outside so that the displacement is stopping. So you can see it's settling down there. And then you can go to the last frame, just move it to the other side. Just keep it clean, you know, something like that. Just full screen that. We could also just increase the size of the replicate node just a little bit, change it to 0 0.95 ish so that it's almost touching. Then let's add in another merge 3D and then add in a camera 3D. Pipe that into the merge. We can click the camera node, drag the camera 
to the front of the scene. We can also add in a render 3D. I'm just going to add a quick animation. So I'm going to enable use target. I'm going to right click the X axis of the target. I'm going to connect it to shape 3D X offset. Connect the Z to the Y offset. So if you're moving the shape 3D, now you can see we're essentially controlling the camera as well. It's connected to everything. Now let's just quickly view the render 3D and then we'll start to add some lights and, and make it look a bit nice. So change the render type to hardware and then we can enable lighting. And then if we add in an ambient light and a spotlight, just uh, delete the merge 3D, um, pipe those in like so. Then take the spotlight, transform tab, enable use target, and just raise it up quite a bit and then put it back as well so that we get a nice backlit scene here like that. Let's change the decay type to linear, then lower the decay rate to something like 0 0.02, something like that. Increase this later if it turns out it's too, too harsh. Change the cone angle so that it fits the whole square like so. And you can actually just increase the penumbra angle to like uh, smooth out the transition. You can also increase the drop off as well a little bit. But yeah, let's just uh, increase that like so. Now if we watch the render 3D here, let's uh, move the camera a little bit closer to the front of the, to the edge. We can raise the Y value, something like that. We can also raise the Y value of the target here in theory or in practice. This is essentially the pan function, right? So something like that. Then let's add some um, keyframes to the to the translate group of the camera as well. Just go to the first frame, right click animate translate group. Now here you can slide the X value all the way to the corner of the front, slide the X value as well. So that is almost touching the corner and then go to the last frame and then just move the X value all the way over to the other side so that we're getting like a uh, opposite movement here. So something like that. So if you play this back, you can see we have, we have some neat animation going on. However, our lighting is a little strong, so we can increase the decay rate, something like that. So that's the animation setup. Let's increase the ambient light to 0 0.6 maybe. Uh, maybe we can do actually 0 0.5. Now you have a pretty neat animation here. However, I want to have a bit of a camera shake. So in the rotation tab, right click on the X value, modify with shake. You can do that for the, for the Y and the Z value as well. So shake, modify with shake. Let me just turn off HQ and motion blur here. You can see we have some dynamic camera movement here, so that's really nice. Also, let's just quickly increase the subdivisions here. So change that to 64 by 64, just to make it perfectly smooth. And then in the render 3D, go in under anti-aliasing and then just disable anti-aliasing for the RGBA, like so, and then go in under output channels, enable Z and normal. Add in a ambient occlusion node pipe the camera into it, just view that, and then just change the output mode to color. You can also change the kernel radius if you want. I already went over this part in the in my previous video, so if you want to learn more about this bit, uh, please just consider checking out that video. So uh, let me just fine tune the positioning of the shape 3D here. So let's just lower the sphere a little bit, and then we can also reduce the size of it. So that's not too big. There is probably a lot of texturing you can do, but this tutorial is about essentially this scene here. Then let's wrap it all up by adding in a nice background. So let's create a background mode. Let's uh, pipe that into the merge, view the merge, control T to turn it around. I really like the gradients here. So we can change that to a radial and then we can uh, put the uh, left one up in the center. So just type in 0 0.5 and then one. So that's up top and then we can put this end here to 0 0.5 as well. Change the color of the black value to, to something like 0 0.8 on the white scale. And then we can make this one 
match the uh, match the color of the drop off uh, spotlight essentially. So just view the edge here. We can just like lower the so that they're kind of blending together. And actually just move the Y point of the last gradient all the way down. So that would be zero for that one. That gives a nice illusion of space. And then to just render out all of the anti aliasing correctly, let's just uh, change the render 3D. In the image tab, let's change this to 3840 by 2160. And then after the last ambient occlusion node, just add in a resize. Uh, my resize node is based on my like frame format settings in the preferences. So that would be the standards here. So the 1920 by 1080. So if it's not automatically at 1920 by 1080, just change it to that. Because uh, now when you're downscaling it, you're essentially anti-aliasing the image. For the intro video that I created, I essentially rendered out a 3D reflection image and I applied that to the shape 3D as well. I'm just going into the old comp here. I have this uh, sphere uh, and I'm basically taking this 3D scene as it as it was. I'm piping it into a render 3D that's also connected to a spherical camera. And uh, I'm rendering out an ambient occlusion pass. This is essentially the scene ambient uh, with ambient occlusion. It's pretty stylized and low resolution, but it does the trick for reflecting the scene right so and I'm also like using this noise texture here to just add a small displacement to the texture to like give it a ethereal look so yeah that's how uh, how that is set up so in the end we have this final result here so uh, I have some color corrections and stuff like that but you know you could add your own as well this whole video is response to a comment I got on a video a couple of months ago and uh, I've been researching this topic on and off, uh, so um, this is what I came up with. And uh, I actually think it works really nice. I hope you found it useful, hope you learned something. Thanks for watching, and uh, see you in the next one.